So because we live in a stressful life, physiologically and psychologically, we're not getting enough parasympathetic. So as a result, I cannot increase your parasympathetic, but I can hack your vagus nerve. So what got me into this was understanding why meditation works. And meditation, well, why would meditation work? Because when you do those breathing exercises in meditation, where you breathe in to the count of four and breathe out to the count of eight, you're actually stimulating your vagus nerve. And I said to myself, no wonder they tell us to take a breath in and a prolonged expiration. Because in the prolonged expiration, you're stimulating the vagus nerve. So you're hacking the vagus nerve into doing that. And today, we need to do that more than before. It's not that, that as a living soul, you're supposed to be doing this as part of survival. No, it's because of our lifestyle today. It's because we're inflamed that we need more parasympathetic. And the best way to do that is actually to use these vagus nerve hacks, which are on my video. So I love those hacks because I think that really does help. Um, and the meditation part of it was very helpful to me as well because it allowed me to learn what am I doing in silence? Okay, so the vagus never can understand through my breathing exercise, but in my silence, what am I really doing when I'm silent? And it all came down to stress not physiological, but psychological stress reduction. And the question was, how? So in my research, I found out that, you know, when you sit quietly and you're just concentrating only on your breathing, for example, a thought comes and then your attention normally goes to that thought. And then from that to another thought, to another thought, does not. But this way, when you come back to your breathing, that ability to take your attention, your attention away from that thought and come back to where you want it, which is, let's say, your breathing, that ability trains you to put your attention where you want to put it. So what? So what? It means that in day-to-day -day life, the quality of your life will be better because you can control where you put your attention. So you will stop neurosing about the future because you can take your thoughts and bring them into this moment. And you can stop neurosing about the past or reliving the past. And because you will come back to this moment, you are training yourself to have your attention come now to what's happening right now. And that ability to get away from the past, get away from the future, gives you present moment awareness, does huge amounts for your stress management. So all these executives come to me, for example, and I teach them this technique, and they love it because it brings down their stress levels. And with it, I see that the heart-to-heart -heart variability, the vagus nerve function gets better, that the blood pressures get better, that the physiological markers can also improve, such as blood pressure, heart rate variability. And also, when you do this, your gut bacteria changes. Did you know stress changes your gut bacteria, your back, gut back, bacterial population? So when you de-stress and you do these vagal exercises, the populations of your bacteria in your gut changes. So you're right that Food changes every minute to minute what you're eating, your gut bacteria changes. Well, even every thought, every thought and emotion that you're having actually changes your gut microbiome. It's just mind-blowing that we have this amazing pharmacy in our gut that responds to not only the physiological stresses that you're actually seeing through chemistry, but also the chemistry of your mind, your thoughts because they all change your chemistry as well. So I found that meditation and vagal exercises have to be an integral part of modern man's living because we're living in, in, in this industrialized lifestyle and it's, it's just so important. Uh, we just miss that. We, we're living in a sympathetic world and we need to get out of sympath sympathetic mode. We need to get back more parasympathetic. And this is my way of bringing it back into. So that's why I'm working so hard. I'm putting the vagus nerve on the map. I love that. I mean, your video about the hacks on the vagus nerve to stimulate it was fantastic. I've got a list here of how people can hack the vagus nerve and let's go through it one by one. But it's important to increase your vagal tone. So when you have a higher sympathetic uh, nervous system or t uh, tone, you're going to have a lower vagal tone. We want to increase the vagal tone to increase the parasympathetic 
relax, restore, rejuvenate. I have some tips here. Again, coming from your video, I'm going to link your YouTube channel in the description of this episode so people can just look at all your episodes because this is where I got all the information from. You are a wealth and a burst of absolutely brilliant um, information. Hack number one to stimulate your vagus nerve is eye massages, gentle ones, eye massages. Yes, absolutely, because the vagus nerve has endings that go to the eye. So when you do gentle eye massage, it actually goes back because it's two-way street, goes to your vagus nerve, absolutely. Easy. Okay, next one is look left to right. Oh, yeah. No, who would have thought that? Actually, it's looking left to right with your eyes rather than with your head. So it's like looking to the left, looking to the right. And these... Uh, uh, I don't know if you see some of these ancient um, dance modes that you see like in South India, and it's all these eye movements, and I can't help but to think that there is some connection, and um, it, it does stimulate the vagus nerve. And I tried it myself, and I do find it does relax me. I feel better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a good alternative. Some people find meditation and sin just sitting quietly a bit confronting and challenging. So if they can do these other activities, this can also help calm them down. The next one, um, hack number three, ice pack on your neck for five minutes. Oh, yes. Because the vagus nerve is right here next to your carotid. Okay. So if you feel your carotid here, right next to it is the vagus nerve. And if you put an ice pack next to it like that, just for a few minutes on the left, few minutes on the right, and then just alternate. So you totally do about, let's say, 10, 15 minutes. It really sends a signal up that vagus nerve and you do increase vagal tone. Pulse rate does come down. You can do it yourself. You'll notice your pulse will go down. And this is machines that you can actually uh, by or even handheld uh, devices can look at your heart rate variability. So I'm just going to tell you what heart rate variability is. Heart rate variability is that as you breathe in and out, your pulse rate actually increases just a little bit and then decreases just a little bit. So your pulse rate actually is not static. It's not like 60 beats per minute on the clock like a metronome. It's not. It's it's 57, 58, and then 60, 61, 62, and comes back. So there is a variation, and that is a sign of good vagal tone. So if you want to know whether your vagus nerve is shot, whether you have too much adrenaline in your body, you don't have enough vagal, just do your heart rate variability. It's an easy test to buy, to buy and do yourself uh, with these little handheld machines. So heart rate variability increases, and it has been linked to, in, to survival in numerous studies. In diabetic patients, in cardiovascular patients, heart rate variability is a predictor of total survival. Total survival. I mean, it's so strong. Who and look, Athletes have a lot of heart rate variability. And they do live longer. They are there they are because they have trained their vagus nerve as well. So we need heart rate variability. So yes, hack your vagus nerve. You have to work on your vagus nerve. Okay, next one is eat more omega-3s. We'll talk about that more when we talk about what to eat. Um, humming, that is very good for to increase nitric oxide. Yeah, it's amazing. Humming, humming, that vibration, the vibration is felt and transmitted to your vagus nerve. So uh, it does increase vagal tones. Humming, singing, singing, same thing. Uh, singing and hung. Because if you think about it, those deep breaths that you're taking in and out in your lungs and you're catching that high note, um, that's all vagus nerve stimulation because there's vagus nerve endings in your lungs. Lots of them. Take a deep breath in and out and you'll find that your heart rate variability suddenly changes because all those vagus nerve endings are being stimulated with inspiration and expiration. Okay, laughing also does the same thing. Oh, laughing is so important. It does not only the lungs, but it's also the belly itself because you, you're sending these pulsations. And, and I know most of the vagus nerve actually ends up in your gut. So you, it's like giving that vagus nerve a jolly good massage. I mean, you are really giving that vagus nerve a great massage. So I love laughing. Laughing clubs are great. You should open up a laughing club and have these people just come in and just laugh for no reason. See, <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Laughing is so important. Laugh at anything. Laugh. The more you laugh, the better. You'll live longer. I wonder when was the last time, if someone's watching this, when was the last time that they had a really good laugh? Uh, because it just doesn't really happen these days, I think. I mean, I, I laugh. Like, I kind of joke around. Like, when I'm not on the health podcast, I'm very serious on here. But, you know, I like to take uh, life easy. And it seems like with these hacks, it's just movement, laughing, relaxation, um, singing, doing more of the things that we're meant to do as humans. The last one is intense exercise. 
again, what we're meant to do as humans. Yes, yes, you were supposed to do all this because food was not supposed to come so easily, okay? I mean, all we do nowadays is take four paces and then the right hand grabs a handle, pulls it towards us, and galore food, right? It's, that's unnatural. You're not supposed to do that. So if you work out before you actually feed yourself, that's the way it's supposed to be. And of course, after food, you should also do some work because now wherever you are, you need to come home. So that's why walking after meals decreases your, your glucose levels. And because it pushes it into the, into the muscles where your GLUT4 receptors are all now opened up, so all that glucose is sucked into the muscles. So you got to exercise. you got to exercise before food and after food. It's so important. So if you really liked and enjoyed this video, then check out this clip because I think you'll find it very helpful. And of course, if you want to see the full video, this is where you'd go. Now, also, don't forget to check out my website because there's lots of educational materials and resources there. You'll also find how to contact me or have a consultation with me. So please do check out my website. Thank you.